Welcome back, everyone. It is Eric from Rare Candy. And today, now that I'm finally back from the European Air National Championships, I actually want to cover a deck that I almost played for the event. We have today Arceus V-Star paired with Flying Pikachu VMAX and Espeon VMAX. So I've actually always really liked this deck. I day two Peoria Regionals with a very similar list earlier in the season. But the issue was that after Lugia came out, that deck just became far too dominant for a slower, you know, fairer deck like this to be able to compete. But since we've had a rotation, things have slowed down, you know, just a little bit. A deck like this, or I'd say just these Babarel Arceus decks in general, could wind up being maybe a little bit more playable than they were back in the Silver Tempest format. But before we get any deeper into today's deck list and jump into some games, if you guys need any cards to complete this deck for yourself, you can check out our friends over at ptcgostore.com. Use coupon code RARECANDY at checkout for a discount on any PTCG Live codes. And Rare Candy's patrons not only had early access to this deck list, but also have their own exclusive discount code for even bigger savings. Links to those will be down below in the description. But of course, Arceus V-Star here is going to be the heart and soul of the deck. For that Trinity Nova attack, it does 200, and we search our deck for three basic energies and attach them to our Pokemon V in any way that we like. And then of course, we do still also have that amazing Starbirth V-Star power that lets us get any two cards and put them directly into our hand. 200 is okay, but we definitely need some help against certain matchups out there. That's partially where Flying Pikachu VMAX comes in handy here, has the Max Balloon attack that does 160 and you prevent all damage done to it by basic Pokemon on your opponent's next turn. So this is really good, especially against Lost Box decks, but also really good against Lugia V-Star because against Lugia, you actually one shot their V-Star, assuming they don't play something like Dunsparce, of course, but also you wall against things like Stonjourner, Tyranitar V, the Baby Evil Tall, et cetera. And our other Pokemon VMAX that we have is gonna be a 1-1 Espeon VMAX line. And Espeon actually does serve a couple of different roles here. First up, we have the ability prevents all effects from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon done to your Pokemon that have energy attached to them. And this is good for a number of different matchups you might run into. So if you go against something like a Giratina V-Star, they can't use Star Requiem to instantly KO you. We can also prevent the attack on Sableye, which is you know one of the biggest attackers that these different Lost Zone decks have at their disposal. But Espeon does also have the Max Mindstorm attack. It does 60 for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So whether it's something like Maridon, Lugia or especially opposing Arceus decks, if they've already committed a bunch of energy onto their field, you can just take back-to-back -back huge KOs with this thing. We also have a copy of Drapion V to deal with Mew V Max just to get a free three prize KO. But because Drapion is a Pokemon V, we can actually power it up with our Trinity Nova attack and then be able to boss up a Gardevoir EX for that matchup as well. And we also have our copy of Punkaboo to bump annoying stadiums from play, most notably probably being Path to the Peak. And speaking of which, we do have three copies of Path of our own here, which I think is so good in this format to shut off the abilities of Pokemon with a rule box. And this is good against so many different decks, whether it's Gardevoir, Maridon, opposing Arceus decks, Mew, Lugia, Card is just very, very good. We have two copies of Sharon's Care to pick up one of our damage colorless Pokemon. So of course, just to give our Arceus a little bit more tanking potential, very good against Lost Box decks or other decks that have to two hit KO our Pokemon. We do have a single copy of Choice Belt just to help buff our damage from time to time. But the card in the list that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb here is probably gonna be the other tool that you see. That is gonna be Leafy Camo Poncho. So this is a really cool card that I actually wouldn't mind a second copy of. But whenever your opponent plays a supporter card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to the Pokemon V-Star or V-Max this card is attached to. We can actually put this on our Flying Pikachu V-Max and that way your opponent can never go escape rope bosses orders up your Pikachu and knock it out with a Raikou V. That is going to be a common way they are going to approach the matchup. Or similarly, if we are going against the deck like Giratina V-Star and we have our Espeon V Max in play, well, more than likely they play a Drapion of their own and they can always just double Mirage Gate, boss up our Espeon and knock it out. And Leafy Camo Poncho takes that sort of play away from them. And not too many surprises here for our energy cards, guys, but we do have the two copies of V-Guard energy just to make us a little bit tankier against Pokemon V. So if we actually have this plus our Radiant Guard of our own play, we are going to be taking 50 less damage from Pokemon V, which is really good against a number of different decks right now. 
But that is going to be the list we are trying out today, guys. Just be sure to smack that like button to feed that YouTube algorithm. And let's jump in some games and see if we can get some dubs today with the Arceus Pikachu Espeon deck. Okay, so it looks like some sort of lost box deck. All right, so definitely get down double turbo. But beyond that, do we actually get anything else down? Like in case of an escape rope, I think we actually just kind of leave this hand as is, if I'm being honest, guys. So, I mean, we could get down a flying Pikachu, but again, escape rope still could allow them to get like a cram hit in. So I think we're just gonna pass. You know, unless this is like Turbo Lost Box where they go for like the big turn one Mirage Gate. I don't think we're in danger of a KO, more than likely at least. Okay, but it's gonna be Gudra. Okay, now Gudra is definitely gonna be a bit of a tough matchup for us because we already don't hit for like the heaviest amount of damage with this deck. So, but if we have Belt plus all basic energy, that's 230. Um, that still would be a two shot, guys. So I think that is our game plan. We need an Arceus with Belt and all basic energy. So we probably are gonna bench this uh, Arceus here on the next turn. And also too, uh, Espeon V Max definitely could be an option for us too, especially since they are, uh, or they did just get rid of the Drapey on there. And we have, you know, a little bit of tanking potential ourselves with the Sharon's Care. So actually, you know, this might not actually be as bad as it seems. So yeah, we'll do this. And I think we're actually just gonna go aggressive and just get the first hit in on this Gudra. Uh, go for the Starbirth. Let's see, so we're definitely gonna get a boss, but beyond that, we could get a Bidoof. Path actually might be pretty good here. Just to prevent a Moisture Star if they do have the V-Star ready. So I think that is what we're gonna do. Uh, what? So I didn't even have the timer, but Live just booted me out of Starbirth. <laughs> okay. Okay. What the f Well, I don't think we're gonna win this one now, guys, if I just had to guess. So we're just gonna scoop. This was uh, especially bizarre for, for live. Oh, never mind. I guess we're gonna win either way. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, this game was PTTG Live in a nutshell. I have no idea what happened. It just made us stop Starbar thing, made us just end our turn, no timer, no nothing, but our opponent still concedes, so I don't know, maybe Live was doing some weird stuff for them too and they just had enough of it. Okay, we see a Radiant Greninja, it doesn't tell us too much about what we're up against. Okay, we do get a Judge, so that's pretty good. So we're probably not gonna need Pumpkaboo no matter what th this matchup is, so I think we just toss this and maybe toss up Basic Lightning. I think we can live with that. Probably can't get rid of more than that this game. But there's gonna be Arceus V. Let's take a look, see what we have. Okay, we do have our Flying Pikachu in case this is gonna be a Lost Zone deck. Uh, we have Drapion just in case this is Gardevoir. Sharon's Cares, we have another Switch. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna go for the Arceus here. Uh, just attach. And in case this is a Lost Zone deck, guys, I might just retreat because I don't want them to cram and hit into our Flying Pikachu. Now they can still escape rope, that is definitely a possibility, but I want to at least force them. Okay, it's not going to be a Lost Zone deck. Uh, this is going to be probably the Dialga deck um, using like Maridon to get set up. Yep, so pretty good start for opponent now. Unfortunately for them, we do have Judge, so if we can get Arceus on this next turn, we can path them and hopefully keep them stuck with kind of a low hand size here. That's kind of the dream. So a Pokemon we definitely want to set up if possible is going to be Espeon VMAX because they're trying to just stack tons of energy on Dialga. And if we can... Okay, now this is tempting because I kind of want to Judge to reset their hand, but at the same time we need a lot of cards. But guys, I think we're going to get a little bit greedy with it. Um, I really just want to keep them from getting set up. If they ever get Magnezone in play, it feels bad for us. We need a couple turns probably to get set up a little bit better here. So hopefully this judge can stick for at least a turn. And ugh, that is that's pretty bad. Not going to lie to you guys. That is pretty bad indeed. So we still just have to Trinity charge here. 
and we probably path as well, as much as I hate to say. Well, in case we top deck V-Star, we actually probably need the path. Yeah, this is kind of a rough one, guys. We could get down Radiant Gardevoir as well. And I guess we probably should. Well, actually, maybe we shouldn't because we have the V-Guard already. So the V-Star power on Dialga can't knock us out already. So maybe we should have held off on that in case they go for like a defensive boss play. But yeah, I think we have to keep this hand as is in case we top deck Ultra Ball. That way we can get a V-Star. You know, guys, we knew this was the risk of going for a Judge instead of a Research, but if we just hit an Arceus or a V-Star there, you know, we could have survived with a low hand size. Absolutely. Okay, Concealed Cards. Hopefully we see a Judge from our opponent. That would definitely be ideal here, though I don't think we're quite that lucky. There's Ultra Ball, so um, I got a bad feeling we are going to see Magma Zone come down here. Getting rid of Boss and Nest Ball, that's cool. Yeah. So maybe actually in hindsight, we could have put down Path and saved the Guardi in case of an Ultra Ball. But I guess at that point, though, we can't actually use our V-Star's power. So yeah, the Judge just kind of gave us not a whole lot to work with. So maybe we should have just gone for the Research Guys and just tried to guarantee that we get the Path down and all that good stuff. But they didn't hit much with the Magazine, so we actually still might be safe for another turn here, which definitely would be good. We need as many turns as possible. And the last card is going to be a switch. Okay. I'm just going to switch into Maridon. Okay. I'm kind of okay with that. Okay. Awesome. So it is unfortunate we do have to get rid of this particular set of cards, but uh, is what it is, guys. So let's just go for Starbirth here. And what we're going to do, I think we're just going to go for Research. I mean, we could even go for boss on the Magnezone. But I think we just need to get set up. I think that's more so our issue right this second. But I kind of wouldn't mind guaranteeing that we set up Espeon this turn. Uh, we have more outs to Espeon than we do path. So I think we're just going to do this. Okay. That kind of worked out there, I say. So we'll go for the Nest Ball over here. Let's see, what energy do we have left in deck? Uh, okay, we have a single Psychic. So we'll do this as well. And yeah, we'll just go for the Trinity Nova over here. Okay, so our opponent had a zero card hand when we last left them. So they didn't know what any of these cards were. So hopefully no supporters. That's what I'm really hoping to see here. Hoping the path does its job here and prevents them from using Greninja and Rotom. Okay, there's the V-Star. Kind of saw that one. Kind of saw that one coming. So let's see. Uh, if we do attack with SP on VMAX, how much energy do we actually need? Because it's 60 for every energy. So if they have, what, five energy, that would be enough. Okay, so just gonna go for the Metal Blast here. That's cool. Just gonna do this and we are gonna research here. Get down Bidoof and we just retreat. That seems good. And Pikachu is not in danger of a Star Chrono, so we would rather do this than attack with the Arceus at this point. So we'll just go for the Max Balloon. So now we do at least force them to have a boss if they do want to knock out Arceus with their V-Star power. And if they knock out the active Pikachu, that's it's annoying, but it's kind of okay because at least they're not getting an extra turn with that V-Star power. So at least this way, if they do knock us out, we can at least judge them, get the return KO, and be good to go. Okay, there's going to be a boss. Are they going to target down Espeon? Okay, they are. That's actually a little bit annoying. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, okay. 
So at this point, we just sack probably the Radiant Guardy, if I'm being honest. We'll say sure. Now, if they have boss again, that feels pretty bad. Okay, so it looks like they are gearing up to start attacking with Magnus. God, they really need to fix this bug in PTCG Live. Like, I guess technically I can just go into Windows and mute the entire program, but... I shouldn't have to do all that just to play this game without the sound effects randomly coming on. Okay, so Magso is going to take the KO. That's fine. But we can just boss this thing up. So I think we're still going to be in, you know, kind of an okay spot here. Uh, I would love the Sharon's Care, but we really just need to... We really just need to make sure we're getting this attack off this turn. So let's see here. Um, are we actually going to start setting up another Arceus V at this point? So we'll go boss over here. Bring up Taja. Okay, after this game, I'm definitely going to mute this program. This is like insufferable at this point. So we'll get down our double turbo here. And industrious for two. Okay. And I think we're pretty cool with this hand. So let's just go for the max boon, take the KO. Next turn we can Sharon's the Arceus, uh, re-evolve. Knock out a Magnus there more than likely as well. Okay, uh, pretty decent prizes. Definitely would like to see a boss though. Okay, we should have two in deck. I didn't take note of if we have any prize, but that's going to be our next order of business. So one thing I'm curious about is if this deck plays Thornton, because there is a world where they could go like drop a ton of energy on this Maridon, then Thornton it into a Dialga and Evolve or something like that. Um, but assuming they never stop another Dialga, I think we're actually in a pretty good spot to close out this game here. So what about our Choice Belt? That is... Okay, that's something we still could have access to. Um... Try and think if there's a world where we just boss twice to win this game. But I don't think it's going to happen. Well, it still could. So let's go ahead and just do this. Nest ball. Let's take a peek, see what we have. I might just get down a flying Pikachu. Well, yeah, I feel like that's fine at this point. Just a thin out of deck. We do have a boss prized. And we do have a belt. Okay. So I think if we can go for boss, we actually might just do it, to be honest, guys. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, we'll Ultra Ball. Get rid of both of these. Sure, probably just get down the Bidoof. I don't see any reason not to at this point. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, no boss, but we can at least Sharon, so it's not the end of the world, guys. Yeah, Sharon's care. Fail the nest ball. We just want to play our hand down as much as possible over here at this point. I'll say, sure, we'll get that down. And just trendy Nova. And if they do attack into our active, too, we always have another Sharon's ready to go. Uh, but we definitely want to keep Pikachu safe. Oh, yeah, and we do have to get rid of our camo poncho, which is very unfortunate. But we still get the victory screen either way, so they just kind of ran out of steam there after that big dial go went down. So we probably picked, like, the worst matchup possible to start Pumpkaboo here. Because <laughs> it looks like this is going to be, like, an Arceus mirror. And if they're going first, there's a high likelihood they're going to be the first ones to get down a path to the peak. And so we probably would have liked to have had the Pumpkaboo uh, to be able to bump that. Now, that being said, we can at least guarantee Arceus plus DTE turn one. So that's really good. But um, we might just have to play down our hand kind of low in preparation of like Judge Path. Like I want to thin as many bad cards out deck as possible here. Okay. So... I really don't want to research this hand, if I'm being honest, either. 
So I think we just do this and this. And I think we're cool with the rest of these cards staying in deck. Okay. And we do have Radiant Gardevoir in deck. That's actually really big too. We have our Espeon B Max. Um, we just have to not get bodied by Judge Path. <laughs> as long as we can avoid that happening, we're good. We even have our Camo Poncho and our Belt as well. So let's see. It would be nice to get down a bit doof, though. I, I will say that. But we're going to say end turn. Because if they do Judge Path us, uh, we actually don't mind hitting Raihan back off of a Judge just because we can use that to guarantee an attack. So just trying to think cards we want to see off a judge path. We kind of want to see all of these. So kind of wish this was a nest ball. That would definitely make this turn a lot easier than it was already. Ooh, and just a power edge. Okay. Surprisingly, we are going to be the first ones to get down path to the peak here. Okay, so we're definitely going to V-Guard energy. Absolutely here. Um, or actually, maybe we... We actually may have should have just Raihond here. So we Ultra Ball. I mean, we still could Raihond though. That way we can keep this V Guard because V Guard is really good in this matchup. But um, no, I think we just have to commit to this research here. So at this point, we definitely want to get Path to the Peak. That's like the, the big card we want to see sort of no matter what here. And we'll just go for the research. Okay, all pretty good cards. So Nest Ball, Espeon V, Matt, or Espeon V absolutely here. Now, if they have Arceus Boss, that feels kind of awful, but... Oh, actually, Radiant Gardevoir kind of fixes that for us a little bit. Down this, and... Maybe another Arceus V that's like not the worst thing either. Sure, and we're just going to... Oh, no, we want to start with here. So, Path and maybe even Boss. Or a Switch. That, that actually might be pretty good. In case they do go for like a defensive Boss play. I'm going to say Sure. And Trey Nova. Definitely do this. Now, if they do have just an Arceus V-Star in hand, they would still be able to boss Espeon V, which would feel kind of like crap, if we're being honest. But I think we're just going to say screw it. Our opponent's not going to have it. Their hand was kind of dead last turn, so where are the odds they're going to, um, you know, suddenly have everything they need here, you know? Okay, we got a V-Star coming down. That's cool. We don't care about uh, Giratina V-Star. Arceus V... Ooh, and they do have a Sharon's Care. Okay. The Sharon's Care actually is pretty good here, too, because they can heal it off. They accelerate all their energy to the V-Star. If they accelerate all their energy back here, we probably just take the knockout with SP on V-Max. Because this is really our biggest threat. I don't think we care about too much else our opponent might have. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Get rid of this. Probably get rid of Camo Poncho at this point. We're kind of in the lead here. I don't think we're too worried about what they might have. Mm, in case they go for a defensive boss, we I kind of wouldn't mind the extra switch. I think we're going to go for it. Our opponent's hand has been kind of dead. And we'll just max Mindstorm. And if our opponent does evolve into a V-Star and starts using that, that's also fine just because they're putting more energy in play for us to do more damage with our Espeon. So there's going to be a Sharon's Care. That's cool. And just a Power Edge. So kind of unfortunate for our opponent here. So... 
And we get the vitreous screen. Yeah, our opponent was definitely not in too good of a spot there, that's for sure. Especially after we just nuked that uh, Giratina. Alrighty, guys, that's going to do it today here for our Arceus V-Star Flying Pikachu Espeon VMAX deck. And like I said, I was actually considering playing this for EUIC, so I definitely think the deck is decent. But I will say going forward, I am a little bit scared off of playing it just because, you know, it's an Arceus Barrel deck at its core. These decks do brick from time to time. But also, you know, Lugia has sort of adapted and started playing these different evolutions with Duraludon and the single strike Urshifu. So I think this deck is actually probably a little bit less well positioned after EYC than I think going into it. But with that being said, guys, I hope you did enjoy today's content. Of course, if you did, feel free to leave a like on the video. Or if you're feeling a little bit extra generous and want to take that support to the next level, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or pick up some merch at rarecandytcg.com. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.